Winter greenhouse update! Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new, my name is Rose, mm -hmm. my pronouns are she, her, and in today's video, we are fixing up the greenhouse for winter. There you go. Because we've been trying to keep some houseplants here with a little heater to keep it to like 10 degrees, but the bill that we got for that one month that we tried was super, super high. So we cannot afford to keep this at 10 degrees. So we're gonna put some plants into a tent and then maybe move the plants that would freeze into them and then also test out how other plants would do outside. I hope you enjoy a vlog kind of video. If you do, please give this a thumbs up and let me know in the comments what you want to see because I'm trying to test out what you guys like. Apart from tours, we are back in lockdown so I'm not able to go to shops, but I am able to make vloggy videos or informative content. Let me know what you like in the comments and let's get started. This is what it currently looks like. It's a bit messy because we keep stuff in here to keep it dry, but we have some house plants in here, like an Alocasia zebrina, a ficus, some jungle cacti up there that I'm a bit worried about, then a few syngoniums and philodendrons, some hoyas, big cactus that can definitely take the cold. We have a big strelitzia here, and these, this is a fern tree that lives here for winter. Bananas that should also be able to take the cold. And we made the whole top and front covered with uh, plastic, like bubbly plastic. On this side, we have the palms that usually live outside, but they are inside for winter. And then the living wall, which I am a little bit worried about because this is Hoyas that we cannot put into the tent. So they might not survive the winter, we'll see. Pachira aquata guys here. We have the beautiful Ficus revoluta and then some more succulenty bits. Over here, a huge alocasia and another banana, or it's a fake banana actually, red stem banana. And then our sleeping bed sofa. If you wanna see more about the greenhouse, I have actually made a whole, is it this side or this? I always forget. A whole playlist with all the videos that we made about the greenhouse, how it got installed, how we first started everything and how it's been going. So check that out if you wanna know more. But for now, we're gonna move the plants, make space for the tent that is still living indoors upstairs and then put everything back, hopefully a little bit safer for winter. Our beautiful big banana last year, we cut it back, but in the wrong way. So we chopped it flat off and it had a lot of struggle coming back, as you can see here. And this year we actually looked into it a little bit more. So we're gonna cut some of the leaves off. But we're gonna leave the main stem intact. Also because it probably doesn't get super cold in here, so it might survive winter. This Musa, what is the name again? Bashu. Bashu also has some yellowing and brown, brown leaves and the Zebrina as well. So there's some more to chop. Go ahead, boyfriend. Woo. Ugh. Is that a snail? Or is that just a rotting leaf? No, just a rotting leaf. Snip, snip. Goodbye. Oh my God, dear. One plant I have struggled with a lot is this string of pearls. And I just noticed that there is flower buds everywhere. I wonder if this is stress flowering from the cold or if it's just happy getting so much light because of course in a greenhouse it gets much more light than it would indoors. Have you ever seen this flower before? Yeah. Me neither. This is very cool. Now it's time to empty out the grow tent, which it doesn't contain many plants anymore anyway, because um, I've been putting them into the big terrarium, but there's still a few in there. So let's look in there. The reason we are planning to remove this is because it is quite ugly in our home. We would like to access that corner again. Plus it creates some like condensation at the bottom. So the floor has been ruined slightly. It'll be good to use it in the outside so that it keeps the plants warm, but it's not in our ugly <laughs> vision, in our vision, making it ugly. So we have a few more plants in here. Some of my favorite Hoyas, 
that will go downstairs in the small terrarium and then some aeroids that I might actually keep in here because I have so many melanochrysum. I will remove the splendid and the monstera obliqua. Let's go. The last two plants are grown against the wall. So we're gonna carefully remove this. This is monstera obliqua, uh, Bolivian form. And here we have, I think I'm gonna leave this in and just chop it off here so that it can continue to grow outside. Hopefully that works. But this one we definitely wanna rescue. Let's see. Ah, sorry. Sorry, little obliqua. Ha, ah, there we go. If anyone tells you obliqua are hard to grow, don't believe them, because I had no experience with them. And I chopped it back several times, made cuttings for my friends, and it's grown a lot. So it's empty now. We have this piece that's gonna continue growing there. We're gonna take the shelves out and see how we're gonna move this thing downstairs. It's a bit of a murder scene because it just didn't fit through our stair hole, whatever it's called. Hi, Mickey! But this shows you what happens because there is so much uh, water in the bottom of the tent, it starts to rust a little bit. Let's move it out. What I noticed with the tent is because there's water at the bottom, you can see here, this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is what it looks like now because it's saturated with water. I did get a replacement tent from them because the, there was some delamination de of the plastic, like you can see here as well. But I didn't use it yet because I didn't feel like setting it up. And then here underneath, we used something to help, but here there's lots of water everywhere. So I highly recommend being careful of where you put these in your home. Here you can see it as well, how wet everything is. It's definitely not good if you're renting or you don't want to ruin your brand new floors, which we did. Okay, let's take her outside. All right, the tent is up, the shelves are here, Maggie is here. I decided to put the opening to this side so I have easier access to it. Now we need some cords. We think the Raphidophora survived, the lamp survived. Yay! The shelves are back in, so it's time to start moving the plants in. These babies are also going in just to be sure. And the cactus can actually survive winter outside. Ooh, we have a light now. Thank you, boyfriend. And I'm just going to keep space for when it gets too cold that we can move these guys in there as well. So hopefully it's not going to be too full in there. I actually want to change the shelves to make the lowest one a little bit less tall and then the top one a little bit lower. So <laughs> I have to take everything out again and then redo everything. Okay, the house is a mess, but we made it work. There was not enough light in the tent because I put so many plants in. So instead I put an extra light at the bottom, which I will show you now. Let's do a little tour. So at the top, right underneath this 
light that it used to be very bright it's not anymore but anyway we have my succulents that hopefully are gonna do better here because inside they were actually very close to my window which is single pane and it's very cold there so i think it will be they will all be happier here by the way how cool are these lithops growing crazy so that's the first layer we have the string of pearls variegata here as well which used to be a little bit sad because of the cold but at least it was alive so i'm happy i hung these on the side here with the ropes that i had already made previously i hung my little anthurium up here um here is a shelf with some bigger hoyas and some succulents that also want quite a lot of lights on this side we have this one hanging this is such a cute plant by the way you have to look up close to see how cute it is, but it's a Paradoxa chain, Raphidophora, no, not Raphidophora, um, Ripsalis Paradoxa chain, I think it is. Here's a Hoya that used to be outside, but it was bleached a lot from the amount of light, and then also it got obviously quite cold, so I'm hoping that will be happier in here. Then we have another LED light here, which is amazing, I love them so much. If you want to watch a video about which grow lights I recommend, you can check it here. This is the one I recommend most, plus the one I now have in my terrarium, which I don't mention yet in that video. Here we have some cuttings that I just took, just in water, a varicosum and a melanochrysum. The rest is all Hoyas that were out here getting too cold, but I didn't have space for them inside or they were not the ones that I like as much. Sorry. Here's a bigger varicosum and melanochrysum. And then down here is a little shelf of propagations and the plants that were living outside before so the syngoniums and some philodendron micans is here that was living at the bottom of the tent before this guy my prince of orange used to live outside in summer it really liked it uh, in a little bit of a shadier spot behind the desk and now it gets to get a little bit more warmth so it survives hopefully this is my tray of propagations that i'm super proud of look at those beautiful um jungle cacti growing I love them, so I really want them to survive. We actually put uh, double layers, or my boyfriend did this, double layers of this plastic underneath so that the ones sitting at the bottom don't get too cold. And that's it, basically. We're going to close it and leave it, and hopefully it will be happier in here. Currently, the rest of the greenhouse is a mess, so we're going to have to figure out how to put the big plants around the tent now. So that's the next step, I guess. But first, <laughs> bye friends. <sighs> Get in there. <laughs> Get in there. Okay. Good morning, it's a few days later. It was actually too dark to film the update at the end, but it's a good thing. I don't know if you can see. But it's freezing right now. You can see here the frost on the hot tub, on the palm tree, on the grass. Maybe you can see it. It's about minus three right now, which is about 26 Fahrenheit. So let's see how the greenhouse is doing. Quickly closing the doors every time. So this is what it looks like right now. Over here we have all the plants outside of the tent and my little workstation. I love it. It's much more accessible now. And I use these little thermometers that break down very easily, but they do connect to an app where you can see the temperature and how low it went. So in the greenhouse right now, it's about four degrees, which is about 40 Fahrenheit. And in the tent, that one is broken, so you can't see on the thing, but I saw in the app that it's about eight and a half degrees, which is around 46, 47. So I would like it to stay at 50 minimum for the plants, but that is currently not working out. And I even left everything on last night. The lights, there's two lights in there now, and the fans, because <laughs> when I went to grab the timer, it just completely fell apart, which was a little bit scary to see all these bits pop out when it was still connected to the um, electricity. But I luckily was able to get it out safely and noticed that this probably was not the safest timer anyway. If you can see the browning uh, from heat, it looks like, it looks like this part is not 
very happy or too happy. I don't know. This was a very cheap timer, so I'm going to buy some more quality ones. But yeah, here's an overview uh, from one side. I think it looks very nice. There's not even a plant on this table because we put everything that could be damaged into the tent that fit in there at least. Now you might say these plants will not survive. The cold is only four degrees, Australitia, for example, but I read that they can take quite a bit of cold, not frost, obviously, because then the cells of the plant will break down, but we're gonna try it out. And same with the ficus and the alocasia. I do have a lot of these, so it's not too bad if this um, doesn't make it. But it's interesting to see how much they can take. And it would be amazing to keep them here every winter. If it does freeze a little bit more, I might take those guys into the tent so that they have a safe haven, let's say. This alocasia still looks amazing. This doesn't show any signs of it not liking the colder temperatures, except I would have liked it to grow really big leaves, which it has never done. We've had this for a year already, a little bit less than a year, but it never grew really big leaves. So I need to see what that's about. This little heater is now set to going on when it's one degrees or less. So that's a lot less costs, hopefully for us on the electricity bill. Mickey is here too, investigating what I'm doing. Hi, Mick. And today it looks like it's gonna be a bright sunny day. If you can see over on my neighbor's house, you can actually see the sun already. And we've noticed that as soon as the sun comes out, it actually gets to at least 10 degrees in here, sometimes 15, just because of the effect effectiveness of the glass. So it's actually really, really nice in here on a sunny day. I guess that's it for the updates. If you wanna know more, please leave questions down below. Give this video a thumbs up while you're there. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I selected some videos for you to watch if you wanna consume more planty content. Thanks for watching, friends. Bye.